Okay, let's bring in somebody who's familiar with all three of those companies. We've got Bob O'Donnell. He is president and chief analyst at Technalysis Research. Uh, Bob, you know, we're walking through the numbers here. It seems like, no question, this strong number across the board for all three companies, but there does seem to be some investor worries about a potential slowdown coming later on in the second half of the year. Um, what was your takeaway? Well, I mean, you guys, I think, did a nice job of laying it out. These companies have built positions for themselves over the last couple of years that they have now been executing on quite nicely, and they're really reaping the benefits. All three of them are each doing different things, but they've they've built a body of, of capabilities around themselves. I mean, arguably, Google has you know the smallest group of things around them because Microsoft has a ton of businesses. Apple has a ton of businesses. Um, and yet... You know, they continue just to execute at incredible levels, you know, emphasizing the incredible importance and relevance of tech in our lives. Uh, but of course, the market has priced a lot of these capabilities in. Nobody really knows what's going on with the pandemic in terms of what the impact ultimately is going to be. We're going to look back a couple of years and, and, and I think make some pretty amazing uh, assessments of what actually happened. But the bottom line is the tech importance is incredible. And it's on the devices, it's on the services, uh, it's on the software, all of those things being delivered by all three of those companies. Yeah, and I guess the breakdown too, when you look into it, if that overhang is there, right? And Apple, as we were talking about, did a better job, I think, than people were expecting at navigating some of those supply constraints, but still noted that it could be an issue uh, moving ahead. I mean, if you were kind of looking at these companies and the way that they've all been impacted differently, I suppose, in the pandemic, ooh, I, I would lean towards, I suppose, and maybe the market's doing that today, towards Alphabet and the way they've been able to kind of benefit, if you look at the strength from YouTube, rather than maybe some of the, the, the chip constraint issues on the Apple hardware side. And we've talked a lot about services at Apple, but maybe not necessarily living up to the hopes there as that company looked to shift away from iPhone and all the other devices being as important. I think it's a good point, Zach. I mean, you know, there are going to be some supply constraint issues on any hardware that's made, whether it's, you know, the gaming consoles, uh, you know, for the Xbox consoles for Microsoft, uh, the hardware for Apple. Um, and of course, Google has, while they have a hardware business, it's quite modest. So uh, in terms of just the ability to generate new capabilities, online services, advertising, obviously, as we spend more time online, that's going to grow. Now, look, there is the question of as people start to return to the office and, and, and our, our habits come back, do we have less content consumption overall? That potentially is an overhang uh, for somebody like uh, YouTube, for example. Uh, but fundamentally, I, I still think we've got a lot of capabilities that are there. You know, we're, we're still working towards people, for example, getting one computer per person, right? We still haven't even come close to hitting that yet. Uh, we've grown a lot, uh, for example, but there's more connected devices. I think people discovered, for example, that all the ways you can now consume YouTube on, on your phone and on your TV and on your PC at home. Uh, and so people are doing that. We're starting to slowly but surely even see things like smart home, which was incredibly slow, start to impact. All of those companies have a little bit of a play in that area as well. So, but the big picture is going to be on the cloud businesses that you that you mentioned for Microsoft and uh, Google, um, for advertising, and then for Apple, of course, it's the devices and it's the whole ecosystem they've built, and they they continue to get more people into it, and they drive them deeper into that ecosystem. And you know, like you said, Zach, services is a growing piece of that. Bob, it's been really interesting to see this rivalry between Apple and Microsoft really ignited again, if that's the right word, when you think about the services side, as well as the hardware, sort of trying to connect all the dots with these individual companies. We've heard Satya Nadella talk a lot about how Microsoft is really in prime position to take advantage of what is a new hybrid work environment. How do you see that competition lining up and, and who do you think has the advantage? Uh, it's a great question, Akiko. I mean, I think, Hybrid work is going to continue transform to transform all of these businesses in a lot of interesting ways. Um, you know, from an actual device, physical device perspective, we're seeing uh, Apple, you know, selling a lot of iMacs. That was, or not just iMacs, sorry, uh, Macs, um, including the new uh, M1-based iMac. That's a big part of the story that uh, Apple told, as well as the iPads. So more and more companies are willing to accept Apple devices in an environment where they might be working home in different places. Uh, on the other hand, we saw the Surface business from, from Microsoft slip a little bit. There were some challenges for them that were supply constrained. But 
in terms of services, you've still got a fundamental reliance on Windows as an operating system. And again, on those cloud-based uh, capabilities. And in a hybrid work environment, that clearly tilts towards Microsoft. Uh, so I think that's where they have the advantage. But again, Apple's doing, a, they're catching a lot of people, I think, off guard in terms of how much progress they're making in the business side of the world, let alone, of course, their continued strength in consumer. You know, and then the other big factor quickly uh, is China. And it's really, we all, you know, China is going to be a huge factor for all these companies. One of the big pleasant surprises for Apple was that China was not a problem because there was a concern that it could have been an issue. Uh, but, you know, and we'll see what happens with the Chinese government clamping down on domestic tech companies. What will happen potentially to these inter multinationals? Uh, and how does that impact all of these companies, particularly Apple? Yeah, China's a risk. You got uh, regulation as a risk here, as we talk about, uh, you know, the anti-monopoly crackdown. And you can talk about any one of these tech companies having some risk uh, to both of those. But when you look at the, the next reports, we're going to be getting Facebook and Amazon, uh, Facebook after the bell, Amazon tomorrow. I mean, I guess one trend that stood out and, you know, we talked a lot about YouTube here, but Snapchat as well as Twitter showing some strength on the digital advertising side. Uh, I suppose that would shape up well for, for the overall trends. But what are you expecting to hear from Facebook uh, as they look to report after the bell? Well, I, I think you've nailed it, Zach. It's going to be the advertising story. And, I, I'm, you know, they're going to crush it. I mean, it just seems pretty apparent given all the other things we've seen from these other players in the businesses related to that. I think it's going to be huge numbers for, for Facebook on that front. Um, you know, and again, lots of regulatory concerns for them in particular, I think. And it'll be interesting to see what happens there. You know, they're trying to build up their... Uh, uh, AR and VR headset business. And of course, we got Zuckerberg talking about the metaverse um, <laughs> and uh, what's going to happen there. But uh, I think it's going to be advertising focused. You know, on the Amazon side, I think interestingly, a uh, advertising could actually be a bit of a, a, an additional pleasant surprise for Amazon. We know they're going to crush it on e-commerce. We're all buying things online more than we ever have. And we've got into the habit of doing that so that even as we start to come back from the pandemic, people will continue those habits. The AWS cloud business continues, uh, again, to lead the way. Uh, that whole cloud market is still growing. They still have growth opportunity there. But again, I think advertising for Amazon could actually be a, a very interesting uh, upside for them. Bob O'Donnell, always good to talk to you. Joining us with Technalysis Research. Have a good one.